Can the worst possible Articuno beat the entire game of Pokemon Yellow on zero DVs, minimum battles, and with no TMs? On the surface, this seems like a stupid question. I mean, of course it's going to beat the game on minimum battles, right? It's a legendary Pokemon. But that's not really the question we're asking. We're asking something much harder. Can it beat the game on minimum battles without TMs? And this is where I think the legendary Pokemon just might fail. Because unlike most Pokemon that will gradually gain new moves as they level up, legendary birds don't learn a single new move until level 51. And given that minimum battles runs pretty much finish in the range of level 55 to 58, sometimes level 60, we're probably not going to get a lot of new moves in this one. Will we even get to the point of getting Blizzard? Will we learn agility? Will we take a million attempts to get through this, or will I have to give up and use TMs? There's only one way to find out. Let's get into it. And the actual name of Articuno in Japan. I'm going to name this one Frieza in honor of Japanese. But let's make it like Japanese style. So, Fu. Fi. Frieza. There we go. So, there we go. We start the game. Okay, attack and speed aren't that great. Special and defense are both pretty darn good. And, I mean, that kind of makes sense, I guess. And, uh, yeah. We don't have great HP. This is a legendary Pokemon, though. Supposedly. Apparently. So let's get into the first fight against Rival 1, where I'm just going to go Ice Beam. That's an easy two-hitter. There we go. And Ice Beam theoretically gives us a chance in a lot of fights because we can freeze opponents and if we freeze them then, you know, they're not going to do as much damage to us. The problem is that we're not going to have a lot of attacking PP and we don't get a lot of attacks. I mean, what, we're going to get Agility and Blizzard in the late game, but everything up until then we're just going to have to beat them with Ice Beam and Peck. Peck is not very good, and the fact that this legendary bird only gets a 35 base power flying move is pretty darn bad, in my personal opinion. But we can hit ghosts with our moves, so it's a slight improvement over Dragonite. Rip. Oh man, Dragonite just gets completely wrecked in this one. I'm not sure even in this situation that Peck is better than Ice Beam. Let's see. Yeah, so Ice Beam is always going to be the stronger move, even against opponents that are weak against flying, unless they specifically resisted ice for some reason. Um, that is pretty interesting, if I do say so myself. So let's get into the Brock fight, where this one shouldn't be hard. Ice Beam one-shots, cool. We level up. And then Ice Beam one-shots, cool. We'll take that all day. Perfectly fine with that. So we can get over here. Let's just take on this Bug Catcher. I'm going to go peck on the Bug Catcher just to save PP so that I can use Ice Beam on things that I think are a bigger threat. Because peck does enough damage that it's okay it's not great just okay but on these pokemon that i think are going to do a lot more to us i'm just going to ice beam and destroy them and we can see our ice beam is really really strong like really strong wow we are one-shotting things with our stab ice beam yeah that's not bad that's not bad but it would be nice if all of these pokemon got like drill peck like zapdos does um Articuno and Moltres are kind of getting the shaft here as far as flying moves. I mean, Moltres can get Sky Attack, but I'm not sure we get to the level to get that either. And here, I mean, Mist just isn't very useful to us. It does block status, but... Yeah, I mean, when I say status, I mean stat debuffs, mind you. Okay, here, Ice Beam is pretty well wrecking this... 
the super nerd here. So I'm just going to pop an antidote, get the dome fossil, and move on to Jesse and James. Where Ice Beam takes that one out. That's a one hitter too. Okay, and it's a two hitter on coughing, but still pretty darn good. Cool. Roadblock. But I'm trying to get through this on zero DBs, minimal battles, no TMs if possible. So here at Rival 2, Ice Beam's super effective on the first two Pokemon. It one shots Rattata too. And it's a two hitter there on the Eevee, so pretty darn good. Now Misty's gym is going to resist ice, so I'm going to put her off as long as I can because I just don't think it makes any sense to mess around with that. And here let's just take on the Oddish Lass where Ice Beam should just pretty much destroy her team. Cool. And Ice Beam always gives us a chance in that we can basically freeze anything that's not a fellow ice type. So the only trainer that we're actually going to face where we couldn't freeze would be either Rival 5 and 6 with his Cloyster. We couldn't freeze the Cloyster. And then Lorelei. Lorelei cannot be frozen. Everything else, we're going to be able to go ice moves and get through, I think. Eventually. Even if it, the entire strategy is just to freeze the opponent, it will technically be possible to get through. Look at that freeze on the Drowsy. There we go. <laughs> and there's nothing really standing in our way at this point, I don't think. Like, I don't think Rival 3 is going to be hard at all. Ice Beam? Here I think we peck on the Rattata Ice Beam there. And now Ice Beam freezes the Eevee. There we go. Oh god. This guy's getting destroyed. Oh, we're just wrecking the game, guys. Ha ha ha. Where now we're going to try to take on these trainers. So first things first, the junior trainer. Um, Peck does that much, Ice Beam does that much. Okay, Ice Beam was clearly the play. Here, let's get into Misty. Where technically we could freeze. So we should just go Ice Beam. She just randomizes here. But it was only a three hit KO with Ice Beam. Even with the resistance, that was not bad at all. And we can just move on in the game. Um, I don't think we take on Lieutenant Surge yet. I'm still trying to minimize resets as much as possible. And here, Wrapping Lass is just a, an incredibly, incredibly easy fight with Ice Beam. So we're just going to take that instead. Rock Tunnel Hiker Time? I do not expect this to be hard unless we get a Gen 1 miss. Oh, look at that. Look at that absolute destruction there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that Articuno is actually at least potentially going to be the best of all of the legendaries. Because when we think about it, Moltres, its problem is going to be relying on Fire Spin for most of the run. Um, and then Zapdos isn't going to beat Brock on minimal battles. We've already tried it. Even on max DVs and max stat experience, it just does not get through. Brock on minimum battles. So, for those reasons, I think Articuno is probably going to be the best. It's probably going to be number one of the three birds as we go through the game, but it remains to be seen. Here, I am going to take on Erica immediately because we're not weak to anything here, and Ice Beam should do really good damage. Like, Acid did decent damage there, but we do decent damage too, and we knock her out. Just like that. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make my way over here to the Rocket Game Corner. Because I think these guys are going to be incredibly easy. Here, Ice Beam. Ice Beam. No problem. Okay. So here we are, we're in the basement, we're about to take on Team Rocket, where Ice Beam, Ice Beam, here let's just use some pecs so that we can save the Ice Beams for Giovanni here, and you know I have a full restore. We want to be careful here because the Onyx Rock Throw would be four times super effective against us. But we can just get through those. 
And yeah, it's a couple of ice beams on the Persian. That's why I wanted to not use all of my ice beams there on the Ekans. Cool. Just throw our great balls here. There we go. Got ourselves a Doe Duo. He is going to fly high in the sky. Without wings. Haha. <laughs> He just needs to drink a Red Bull. <laughs> uh, that's that's the story of Doduo and Dodrio. They just forgot to drink Red Bull. <laughs> I am not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> okay, there is the lock. Now let's get into the Lieutenant Surge fight. We are slower, for sure. But, oh, we froze him. <laughs> That's what you get, Lieutenant. You think your paralysis is broken? Come on. It's my freeze that's completely broken. This is how you completely destroy the game with these types of Pokemon. My god. So let's take him on. So Ice Beam is a one-shot there on Firo, one-shot on Magnemite. Here on Shelter, it's still the stronger move. One shot's there, and one shot's EV. We just basically destroyed that entire team with the power of Ice Beam. Now we can go and take on these Channelers, where Ice Beam is not quite a one-hitter. Heck is stronger because they have really high special, and they do not have great defense, so we may be going Peck in here. Here, oh, we froze the ghastly rip. 10% <laughs> chance to freeze, and we got it. So there we go. Ice Beam will completely destroy Marowak. Now we can get in here, where... Ice Beam. Ice Beam. Ice Beam is a two-hitter on Weezing, but we'd still get through. No problem at all. But I don't think we want to take on Rival 5 yet, because even if we got to the end, he has a Flareon. Flareon's going to use super effective moves. He has a Magneton. Magneton's going to use super effective moves. We're neutrally affected by Aurora Beam from the Cloyster. I just don't think it's a super winning fight by any means. Let's just try Koga in our current state with poison so we can't use toxic on me. Okay, so that was a nice little two hitter. Nice little two hitter there. Two hitter there. Uses double team and then psychic. Okay. So this is the first spot where we might need to rare candy up to. I know it seems excessive, but we're not like that close to getting through, so. Okay, we get through that one. Still a two hitter there. Oh, we froze the Venonat, nice. And I think we just need to get the ranges here. See here. Okay, side beam's not too bad. Critical hit there. Double team, but now we froze it. Okay, now we just need to land the hits. There we go. We get through Koga just like that. So, with Koga going down, we're on oh, nine resets. It's not great. It's not perfect. We're not Mewtwo, but we're doing reasonably okay. And now, I mean, I guess we just give the rival one shot at least. We have overall really good stats, obviously. And like we can see, we just don't have anything good for Cloyster. It's going to four times resist Ice Beam. And Clamp does really good damage. So, okay, we take that one down, though. Now, Ice Beam critical hit was very good. Okay. And now Ice Beam is 
Not quite a two hitter, but we get through. Nice, okay, we took down Christmas, guys. Nice, only 11 resets, that's not bad. I'll take that. Okay, let's get into this one with Jesse and James though, where I think we're back to just kind of destroying things. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. We have used a bunch of rare candies at this point, it is worth noting, but I don't think we're gonna need to use any here. Okay, that's a one hitter. That's a two hitter on the Needle Queen, okay. Giovanni is gonna be one of the tough gym leaders at the end because if he hits us with Rock Slide, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna one shot us. Four times super effective with his ride on. So we need a level where we're able to one shot the ride on, basically. So let's get over here. I think we take on Sabrina first. Logic is that Blaine technically will be super effective against us with his fire type moves. So Sabrina, I expect to be the easier gym leader of the two. Given that nothing is particularly strong against us. And if we can just freeze that Alakazam, we will win. We will absolutely win. Okay, we take that one down. One accuracy drop was not too bad. And there we go. We didn't even need the freeze and we finally got through. One HP remaining, but I'll take it. 16 resets so far, that's not bad. But now we have no choice. On minimum battles, the only trainer that we can fight is Blaine. And it's not like we've had a lot of trouble up to this point on minimum battles, so... Getting back here, if we do have to abandon minimum battles, I'm not going to feel too bad, because... We should be able to get back here pretty darn easily, and... You know, normally we could pick up Blizzard right there, and... We'd be like, oh, we've got our strongest attacking move now. But we're only a couple levels away from getting it, aren't we? Oh, rip. No, we're at level 40. <laughs> well, what do I mean a couple levels? We still need... And now Blaine, I think, is going to be hard. I think Blaine's going to come down to freezes, basically. Let's just see. He attacks randomly, so... Flamethrower did that much, though. Okay, it's like a three-hit KO there on the... Ninetales, and we level up after this Pokemon, so there's no real, like, you know, if we can get a bunch of badge boosts, you know, unless we're gonna go yet another rare candy, which I'd prefer not to. Okay. Okay, we froze Rapidash, that was nice. And Takedown took us down. Okay. We really want Reflect from the Arcanine when we get there. Okay, the burn just ends us. Okay, so here I'm gonna drop one rare candy so that we don't level up right there. And maybe then we can get some good luck with tail whips. And like out speed. Oh man, we were so close. He survived with 2 HP, are you kidding me? Ah, uh, See, this is winnable. This is winnable. Okay... We've gotten 2 Arcanine on decent health. And there we go, okay, we get through. 68 resets, but it was possible in the end. I'll take it. We're still in line to get S tier if we get fewer than 32 resets from here, but I'm not super hopeful on that. Okay. So that's a one hitter. That is a two hitter. Not quite a one hitter there. 
This one we might just have to grind it out because this might just come down to freezes basically. Like Doug Trio can do nothing. So there are a couple of possibilities. We could go for badge boosts here on Doug Trio even. We could go for the sand attacks. Still didn't one shot there. That was disappointing, but we do outspeed now. Yeah, so one badge boost is enough to outspeed the Nido King. Oh, and now we've got two badge boosts. So that's enough to knock that out and that out. And now we just one shot the ride on. We didn't even have to stand up to a rock slide. That is perfect. So 76 resets, but we are through. Cool, cool, cool. Badge boosts, they do in fact matter. Okay, so now we can get over here and fight rival six. Here, Ice Beam will wreck that. Ice Beam will wreck that. We're not going to do a lot of damage here on the Cloister, though. So we're really hoping for non-damaging moves. Okay. Here, Magneton, even with a crit, is not a one-hit. So we're going to have to freeze that Magneton, I think. But so that's fine. Uh, we just need better luck here. Okay, one shot, one shot. Those are fine. Clamp missed, that was good. Okay, but then clamp hit. Potions, but that's fine. We'll just take him down. Oh, we froze the Magneton, good. And now Flamethrower wrecks us. Oh God. But here, I'm just gonna spam the rare candies, I think. Here we are, level 47. Like I said, I'm trying to stay on minimum battles if I can. Here. Those two are fine. No, no issues there at all. We don't like these clamps. Go withdraw, there you go. Okay, so we get wrecked on that one, but let's just try this again. Might be a range there, I'm not sure. Like, if we got two perfect damage rolls, who knows? Maybe we are able to knock him out. Okay, critical hit one shot there. Here we froze Kadabra. <laughs> Fire spin missed. And it's frozen, there we go. So we get through 93 resets to beat Rival 6. And I mean, it makes sense. Like, that's that should be a tough fight for us whenever we're up against this Flareon. It's just the fact that we can freeze that makes this possible. And it's gonna be true on the champion too when we get there. Like technically, if you have an ice move and you can outspeed the Flareon, then there's always a chance when you get to Flareon that you could just freeze it, and that is the fight, basically. But we are seeing that it's kind of a big issue that we don't have any real type coverage, because, heck, even though it's a same type move, is just so weak. You know, if we had Drill Peck, we'd probably be able to use that against Pokemon like Cloyster in order to whittle them down. So Dugong might be the wall here, honestly. All right, well, let's get into this. Let's find out. Like we can see how much damage our different moves do here. And plus her healing, yeah. I am willing to bet that this one's just a hard wall, guys. I'm willing to bet that we simply cannot get through this fight.
Like, she heals, she uses super potions, like, there are just tons of reasons why I think this one's not gonna work out. Like, look at this. Oh, God. So, here, I think to stay on minimum battles, we would need TMs. And the question is, what moves would be good for us here? Obviously, Hyper Beam would be one way to go. Fly would be a way to go. Sky Attack could be a way to go. We can obviously come here and get access to... Blizzard in the basement here. I'm just very interested now if we can beat the game on minimal battles, and mostly if we can do it without broken TMs, but just in case, I am going to come up here, I'm going to buy TM32, TM33. I think both of those have potential. We may as well buy TM9 while we're here. Um... We should get a polka doll. Just in case, mimic strats might be the strat here. Okay, so let's test this now. My first inclination, my first idea, is to add sky attack. The logic for adding sky attack is that it's going to be much better than peck. It's 140 base power, so it's technically stronger than Ice Beam with our stab bonus. And I mean, it's pretty much as strong as... Or what? It's going to be stronger than Hyper Beam. Um, and I'm also going to teach Reflect here. So that we have a move to block incoming damage. Let's just see how this goes. So here we can reflect, so we'll take less physical damage while we're setting up. Okay, that turned that one into like a two hit KO, but still we got wrecked. So I'm gonna teach Hyper Beam over Peck now. Okay, so we took that one down now. So here I'm pretty sure if we go Mimic, I think once we get to Slowbro we'll be able to win. So instead of Reflect, I'm going to learn Mimic. Okay, there we go. We get wrecked on that one by Clamp. Okay. Now let's mimic... Withdraw. I too shall withdraw. Yes, let's both withdraw. You know what we should do? We should try to freeze that... Um, Slowbro. That is act. See, this is our last rare candy. Gets us to level 49. Sorry. Let's do this again here.
Okay, we get wrecked there. I was trying to freeze the Slowbro, but I didn't get the freeze and I ended up knocking it out, so... ourselves in confusion otherwise we win there because that lovely kiss was gonna do it PP there. Okay. So this is where I think... Substitute doesn't really help us that much. Double team achieves everything I think I want to achieve here. So I'm going to learn double team over ice beam in this one. We can always learn blizzard later. But yeah, I mean, this one's just bad here at the end, and it's all because of Lorelei. So here, I'm just gonna double team up. Now I'm going to mimic withdraw. Just start spamming it. There, the issue was that we we ran out of PP again, but that was. Okay, so we struggled her down. Oh God, that was bad. Okay. So now I think we go Blizzard over Hyper Beam. I don't think Hyper Beam does enough. Let's get into the Bruno fight here, where Blizzard... I don't even think we need to mess around here. Blizzard's probably just wrecking pretty much everything. Okay, we get through. Cool. So let's get into the Agatha fight now, where this is the one where I think we start off by using Mimic. Sorry, and that was a glitch, but we meant to Mimic on Gengar anyway. So we can Mimic Substitute, which now allows us to avoid a lot of different things, especially Confusion. Sky attack there. We go blizzard here. We go sky attack on haunter. Because physical damage is much better there. 
Okay, and sky attack on the Gengar. Does not one shot, but we take it down. There we go. So, we have made our way through that one. And now on to Lancy Boy. Where I think the only play is to double team here. Against Gyarados and hope and pray. I mean, we could try to freeze it 10% of the time, but... We're really just hoping for a decent number of misses. Okay, now we can just start blizzarding on everything. And we should one-shot as long as we hit. Okay. So we get through. But, I mean, this one's already kind of disappointing, right? We've ended up having to go... Like, all TMs, and two of them are broken TMs, in order to get through this. And it's just because we just don't have enough. We don't have enough moves, we don't have enough power... We just don't have anything going for us, and we're at such a low level because we're in the slow level up group. This is just bad. Just really bad. Okay, so here on the champion, we're gonna set up all the double teams right here on Sand Slash. There we can go Blizzard. Here I'm gonna go Sky Attack. Here I'm gonna Mimic. I'm gonna Mimic Hypnosis. Now we can go Sky Attack. Take that one down. I say Hypnosis on Magneton and Blizzard. Hypnosis on Cloyster. We're gonna go for a couple of Sky Attacks here. Finally, Hypnosis on Flareon. And we take it down. So there we go. 149 resets, two broken TMs. And, I mean, a bunch of other TMs that we tested out. What we tried Reflect, we tried, of course, Blizzard, Hyper Beam, Sky Attack. So those are four non-broken TMs. Yeah, this one's, this one's terrible, guys. Even though it's minimal battles, it's just terrible. So on Minimum Battles, Articuno is terrible. In fact, it's in the same tier as Pokemon like HM Only Mew, uh, Lapras, and of course, Pidgeot. Pidgeot is the worst flying type Pokemon in the game and a legendary bird on Minimum Battles is barely better than it. Because we just had no answer for Lorelei and it kind of wipes out the fact that the rest of the run was incredibly easy. We never had trouble with any of the gym leaders, the rival even with Cloyster was never really terrible, and after we got through Lorelei we were just fine on the rest of the Elite Four. So now I'm wondering at what level could we beat Lorelei without TMs? Of course we can get agility for the badge boost glitch, and we could get Blizzard our strongest same type attacking move, but we still don't get anything that's neutrally effective against Lorelei's Pokemon. So, how many levels will this take? Well, let's jump right ahead to the Elite Four and see how it goes. So starting off here against Lorelei, we're already at level 69, very nice, and we are trying to take down this Dugong. Now, Dugong's not too bad, as long as we hit it once, we can usually get it to go to sleep, which means now we can set up our agilities for badge boost and do enough damage to take it down. Your Blizzard's gonna do just fine against Cloyster, even though it's four times resisted. And we can move on to Slowbro. I use a couple Ice Beams to knock it out. On Jinx, it has low defense, so I just peck it down. Now, can we get through this Lapras? Well, it's doing about a fifth of damage every time we hit it with Blizzard, but we get confused in this one, and now we're out of PP on Blizzard. She uses a Super Potion. We get paralyzed by Body Slam, and just with red health, we got taken out. So now we're going to try this one again at level 70. Let's see how it goes this time. Once again, I'm going to set up my agilities here on the first Dugong. 
Now, even a move like Peck does decent damage here. We're at such a high level that 35 base power still works out. Blizzard is a two hitter here on the Cloister that we do get blocked in Clamp. Now onto the Slowbro. I'm just using Ice Beam to save PP with Blizzard for later on. A couple pecks will still take out the Jinx, but she uses a Super Potion. That was fine. Now we're doing closer to a quarter damage because we got through a damage rounding threshold when we got to level 70. So now with a critical hit, we're able to take down that Lapras and now we can move on. Here, we don't really expect any trouble with the rest of the Elite Four because of the fact that, I mean, we have ice type moves. We should do just fine even against Lance and Agatha with these movesets, especially if we can get a freeze. So let's try Agatha one time here and see how it goes. I'm just going to lead off with all the agilities at the beginning. We resist Mega Drain, fortunately. So this Gengar can't really do much other than paralyze us. Here, one Ice Beam takes out the Golbat. And after the badge boost, we are basically one-shotting the team here. Ice Beam takes down Arbok. Blizzard, critical hit. We get through very, very easily. Now we can move on to Lance. And... Here against Lance, really, it's just a matter of healing up, and if we get through the Gyarados, we're probably going to one-shot everything. So let's find out. Here against the Gyarados, I'm just going to lead off with my agility so that I get as many badge boosts as possible, and I'm guaranteed to outspeed everything. One Blizzard takes it down. Now Ice Beam is the clear play. It's always going to hit 100% of the time. We don't have to deal with accuracy. And even with the level up, who cares? Four times super effective on Dragonite. We're at level 72 now, going into the champion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and heal up and let's just see how the champion fight goes. Here, we're already about 60 battles over minimum battles with seven resets, but we've got all of our stats to be really high at level 72. I mean, if a Pokemon like Golbat can beat the game at this level, we would expect to beat the game at this level with a legendary bird. So maybe it works. Here, we're just going to set up the agilities. We got poisoned. I don't even think that matters. Here, one Ice Beam knocks out the Sand Slash. Peck is a two-hitter here on the Alakazam. Blizzard will one-shot there. Blizzard one-shots on the Magneton. It's going to take maybe three hits here on the Cloister. We get a critical hit. That was lucky. And one Blizzard takes down the Flareon. So right there at level 72, we were able to beat the entire game on zero DVs. But that's not very inspiring. It still puts this Pokemon in a pretty tough spot. 60 optional battles basically is going to put us near the bottom of the A tier. For context, in spite of the A tier finish, it actually took more optional battles to beat the game than Pokemon like Jinx, Muck, or even Bulbasaur. So this is not a very inspiring finish from a Pokemon that's supposed to be legendary. But there is one last thing that we can do. We can try mixing in some TMs and some optional battles to see if we can optimize this Pokemon and maybe just maybe get it into the S tier where legendaries belong. But let's find out if that's the case, starting with what TMs I'm going to add and what optional battles I decide to take. Let's get into it. So starting off, I'm going to actually learn Fly in this one. Fly is really the best flying type move other than Drill Peck in Gen 1. Sky Attack sucks and everything else is just really weak. With Fly, I can now go to the Fighting Dojo and I have a very easy path to victory against all of these trainers because I can just use Fly and knock them out. It's super effective against all of these fighting types, so they're just easy experience and some of the best experience at this point in the game. So I'm just going to knock out all of the weaker trainers and make my way to the dojo leader where I mean yeah we take decent damage from double kick but ice beam just completely wrecks the two hitmons because they don't have great special pick up a hitmon lee and get on out of there now we can go down to koga and I wanted to see if with fly would it be enough to just easily batter our way through koga well not exactly while Fly is pretty strong here and it does decent damage, basically it's not enough to one-shot these Venonats and we get Toxic. And when you get hit by Toxic, you're just not going to have a great time. So let's try this one again. Maybe we just got some bad 
luck there. Maybe Ice Beam's better. Ice Beam's still a two-hit KO at this point. In the no TMs run, I actually beat Koga at level 40. Here I'm only at level 35, so that could be a factor. We make it all the way to Venomoth on this one, but we get poisoned and it's using double team a ton of times. We just can't quite get through. So basically at this point, it's starting to look like this one's a little bit ridiculous. Let's go ahead and just pop some rare candies and level up. This is one of these cases where the extra levels are important, not just for survivability and better stats. It's really about damage rounding thresholds. Here at level 40, Fly is now going to have at least the potential to be a one hit KO. Same with Ice Beam. And because of that, we can get to the final Venomoth much easier. We do take Toxic in this one, but it's pretty clear that really, if we could just land some hits here, we would probably get through. He uses tons of double teams though, so he's an absolute troll in Pokemon Yellow. Let's try this again. Here, Fly one shots the first Venonat. Fly is not quite a one shot on the second Venonat, but we two shot it. Here we get a two hit KO range on the third Venonat. We're to the final Venomoth. It's using double team, but if we can just land one more hit, there we go. We have beaten Koga. We're on five resets at this point. We've taken a handful of optional battles, but we're really not doing too bad at this point. So now you may have noticed that I've been carrying a move Swift on my move set. Why would you use Swift? Well, I've actually been carrying that move this whole time for Sabrina. Sabrina is probably the easiest trainer to exploit with Swift, because if she does lower your accuracy with moves like Flash or Kinesis, she's just giving you badge boosts and attack. And because Swift can never miss, and her Pokemon have fairly weak defense, Swift does decent damage. Here on the Alakazam, I'm using Swift uh, even after it used Reflect. Now it did hit me with a huge Psychic. I only had four HP left, but I did take her down on the first attempt. So anytime you're playing Pokemon Yellow, just get Swift. You completely destroy Sabrina with that move pretty much every time. Now we can move on in the game because we've taken down Sabrina. It's time to take on Blaine. And here, Blaine is not exactly easy at level 48, but we do decent enough damage here that I think we have a decent chance. Here on the Arcanine, it uses the wrong move, take down, and we're able to take him down. So on 11 resets, we've gotten through seven gym leaders. Moving on now to Giovanni's gym, this one should be a pretty much a cakewalk, but we found last time that it can be actually a little bit scary. Right on if it ever does land, Rock Slide will destroy us, and the Nidos can use Thunder, so we weren't quite one-shotting at this level last time. I decide to fight the trainers in Giovanni's gym. They just give really ex easy experience. I mean. Nothing here is really going to stand up to an Ice Beam. So if we can just gain a few extra levels, we may be able to get through this next fight fairly easily. And yeah, you could say that fighting types neutrally effective, but we're definitely doing more than enough damage to make this worth our while. We can even test ourselves out against another guy's Needle King. Great. <laughs> so with these trainers all just going down incredibly easily, it's time to get into the Giovanni fight and see how this one actually goes. My prediction is that if we can get to the Rhydon, it will be a one hit KO and we will effectively win this one without too much trouble, but it just remains to be seen if we can get there consistently. So here we go into the fight with Giovanni. The first Doug Trio, the only thing it can do is actually lower accuracy with Sand Attack and we knock it out. Now here against the Persian, that's the first kind of scary Pokemon because it uses double team, but it also uses moves like Slash. Swift takes it down. Ice Beam one shots the Nidoqueen. Now we've leveled up enough to learn Blizzard. And with Blizzard, I think we can just start destroying the rest of the team. Blizzard's much stronger than Ice Beam. It's 95 base power versus 120. And it's fairly accurate. We have a miss there, but the second Blizzard hits, 
and a blizzard one shots the ride on so a first attempt victory there no problem we're moving on we can take on rival six now and after rival six all we've got to do is take on the elite four it's just a question of will we be able to beat lorelei so i've been saving as many rare candies as i could up to this point yes i dropped quite a few before koga because i didn't want to fight those low xp trainers at that point in the game but basically we still have quite a few rare candies in the bag to use before lorelei here i'm going to just go ahead and destroy the first two pokemon on rival six's team and blizzard will do decent damage here against the cloister so as long as we get that one down now we just hope for a one shot here it's not quite a one shot but we do survive and now we can take down the Kadabra and Flareon. Just don't hit us with Flamethrower, please. I use Blizzard. We get a Fire Spin, but we are outspeeding. And now we can finish it off with an Ice Beam. We get through Rival 6. So we're to the Elite Four with only 11 resets. Yes, we've taken about 20 optional battles at this point. But now we can get to Lorelei. This is the real test. If we get through Lorelei, we're going to get through pretty much the rest of the game. Here, Fly gives us a really strong move to use against her team. But you'll notice that we've also added Hyper Beam. Because Hyper Beam is technically going to be stronger than Fly against these opponents. Here, we can take down the Slowbro and now a single Hyper Beam one-shots the Jinx. Now, it's just a matter of how much damage do we do against this Lapras. One fly and one hyper beam knocks it out. We can move on to Bruno. He should be an absolute cakewalk. So really, I'm not too worried at this point. And I'm feeling pretty darn confident with only 11 resets at this point. We're still in S tier territory. So here, let's go ahead and try to take down Bruno, which is basically just a matter of spamming the A button on Blizzard. Like, you know, this is the meta strategy it's gonna work every time and pretty much make this like a no brain zero challenge fight great we need those sometimes but now we have to move on to agatha agatha hasn't really been that tough so far and fly i actually think is going to make this much easier we're basically going to set up the agilities and then here we can go fly or blizzard against these ghost pokemon here, the advantage of Fly is that it's physical, and physical damage is going to generally hit them harder than trying to go for the blizzards and freezes. Here, against these types of Pokemon, though, we've already been paralyzed, but Hyper Beam is enough to one-shot an Arbok, and now we've just got one Haunter and one Gengar. I go for F Blizzard because of the fact that I'm already paralyzed, but really, Fly is the way to go does way more damage we take down agatha on this first attempt no problem we're on the lance still only 11 resets so it's just a question of can we get through the gyarados if we get through gyarados we're pretty much fine and getting through gyarados is really just about not getting hit by a bunch of hydro pumps while we try to set up our agilities and we're setting up agility just so we outspeed everything and so that we get some badge boosts so here, I'm just going to lead off by spamming agility. It uses Leer. It misses. We get one Hydro Pump. That's not too bad. And it's not quite a one hit there, but we can just use Hyper Beam to finish this one off. Oh, and it didn't quite do enough damage. No. Okay. So we take that one down, though. Now Blizzard should just be a one shot fest on the rest of the team. So can we hit? Yes, we do. We are through to the champion. On only 11 resets, we've added quite a few TMs, but we haven't added any broken TMs, which means we are in pretty good shape at this point. So moving on to the champion now. Clearly, we have to start off by taking down the Sand Slash, but I'm going to set up all of my agilities here because Sand Slash outside of using Slash isn't really that scary. I thought, and then it knocked me out. So now i have to try to figure out how to actually get through this fight and it seems to me that agility would be the best move even if we get poisoned at the beginning of the fight we've already seen in the last run that poison at the beginning didn't mean that much hyper beam one shots alakazam we can blizzard here on the 
Exeggutor, but Blizzard does not one-shot this Magneton. That's the issue. Really, we probably should have gained a few more levels before getting here, but that would require more optional battles, so resets and optional battles really offset my tier list rules. Here, we're going to try this again. Here we get a range where Blizzard does take down the Magneton, and now it's looking like a three-hit KO here on the Cloister. I use Hyper Beam to finish it off, and a Blizzard takes down the Flareon. But you'll notice I skipped quite a few failed attempts there. We ended up at 44 resets. And this seems ridiculous, but honestly, it's about what I would expect from this Pokemon. In spite of the fact that Articuno completely destroys the game all the way up until the Elite Four, it just hits a hard wall when it gets to Lorelei. But funny enough, it also hits a bit of a wall when it gets to the champion because it's a slow level up Pokemon and slow level up Pokemon just don't gain the levels as much as other Pokemon, which means they're always going to struggle at the very end against the strongest opponents. And this is something that just gets kind of glossed over in a lot of other people's runs. They're just fighting a bunch of easy trainers earlier in the game so they get a bunch of extra levels. But when you're trying to beat the game at lower levels, the champion is really, really tough. And when you're trying to do it without just adding broken TMs like Mimic or Rest or Double Team, this is a tough, tough fight. So in the end, Articuno beats the game, but it comes out in the A tier with a final score of 87.8. That's just a touch behind Jinx and just above Muck. This is really not a very inspiring finish. I mean, it's only a few points higher than Golbat. So the fact is that at this point, as far as we can tell, flying types are just really, really bad in Generation 1. And no amount of stats seems to help. But there are two more legendary birds. Zapdos and Moltres, and maybe they can turn this one around. Let's start off with Zapdos next week, where I think it's going to be incredibly interesting, especially because Zapdos is the only legendary bird that can't beat Brock on minimum battles. But it might just have the tools to beat the rest of the game. Anyway, we'll get into that next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Later.